हेलो माई डियर स्टूडेंट्स आई वेलकम ऑल ऑफ यू अगेन इन फोर पाई अकेडमी सो इन दिस फोर पाई अकेडमी वी आर टॉकिंग अबाउट दिस सीरीज दैट इज ऑन अटोमिक एंड मोलिकुलर स्पेक्ट्रोस्कोपी एंड इन द प्रीवियस फोर लेक्चर वी हैव डिस्कस्ड अबाउट द बोहर स्पेक्ट्रा ऑफ हाइड्रोजन एटम दैन वी हैव डिस्कस्ड अबाउट द एनर्जी स्पेक्ट्रल लाइन ऑफ हाइड्रोजन एंड हाइड्रोजन लाइक स्पेक्ट्रा एंड वी हैव टॉक्ड अबाउट द फर्स्ट लाइन एंड सीरीज लिमिट ऑफ the bohr spectrum and then we have further discuss about the redberg atom and we have find out the value of this redberg constant for the finite and infinite nuclei and after that we have discussed uh, the limitations of bohr theory and then we have discussed uh, about the summerfield bohr model for hydrogen like atom and then uh, in that lecture we have talked about uh, the existence of elliptical orbitals so today we will discuss all the important questions which can come from the topics which we have discussed till now so we will discuss all the important questions which have been come in the previous years examination in csir gate jest and tifr examination so let's start our lecture so my first question is so if the redberg constant of an atom of finite nuclear mass is alpha into r infinity where r infinity is the redberg constant corresponding to an infinite nuclear mass then calculate the ratio of the electronic to nuclear mass of the atom so what is given the redberg constant so that bug constant for infinitely heavy nuclei it is given so that we generally represent with r infinity so where we consider m e square 8 epsilon not square h cube c so this is the derivation which we have already derived and here we consider m as the mass of electron now for the finite nuclei so redberg constant for finite nuclei so what we have derived is the value of this redberg constant it changes when there is a change in atomic mass so here we will consider mu that is known as the reduced mass and the value of this mu so that we can find out m into capital m over m plus capital m so where m is the mass of electron and capital m is the mass of particular nucleus so in which those electrons are present now according to questions so what is given the redberg constant of finite nuclear mass so that is of the order of alpha into r infinity so this is given so let us put these values in these equation so this becomes h nu into c so alpha into r infinity that is of the order of m e raised to power 4 e epsilon not square h cube into c so all the other values they get cancelled out so what we left work with this mu is equal to alpha into m now mu that is the reduced mass whose value we can find out that is m into m capital m over m plus m so this we can find out from this relation so this is for the finite nuclear mass so what we find out is so from this we can derive the relation of the two different masses so m plus small m that is equal to alpha into small m from that we can say the capital m it comes out to be m plus capital m into alpha so that is let us open the bracket and take 
all the similar masses to one side so this equation becomes m1 minus alpha is equal to m into alpha so from this we have to find the ratio of the two nuclear masses and that is of the order of 1 over alpha divided by alpha so let us check so which is the correct option so what we have to calculate we have to calculate the ratio of the electronic to the nuclear mass of the atom so electronic mass that is small m and the nuclear mass that is capital m and the correct option which is coming that is our option a so this is the question which has been came in gate 2011 and just 2016 examination so let us discuss the second question so this is the question which is the part of net csir june 2013 examination now the question is a muon from cosmic ray is trapped by a proton to form a hydrogen like atom so given that a muon is approximately 200 times heavier than an electron then calculate the longest wavelength of the spectral line that is in the analogous of Lyman series of such an atom now here muons are the particles which are the binding blocks of the nucleons which are present within the nucleus so these are the muons or muon cloud so which is binding these protons and neutrons and so the majority of these muons they are also present in our cosmic rays now what is given the mass of this muon so that is 200 times heavier than the mass of electron here me is the mass of electron and m mu that is the mass of muon and we know that the mass of proton it is 1836 time heavier than the mass of electron and now there is the interaction which is being taken place between the muon and between proton so the reduced mass from this we can calculate that is the mass of muon into mass of proton over mass of muon plus mass of proton so it comes out to be 200 into 1836 over 200 plus 1836 and that is of the order of 180 times the mass of electron so when we calculate it so what we have found is the mass of reduced mass of this muon that is approximately 180 times the mass of electron now we have to find the longest wavelength of this spectral line and so how we can find out is now we know the relation of this energy so the relation of this energy that is for the muon energy it is 180 times the energy of this hydrogen spectrum because we know that the energy it is directly proportional to the mass of the nuclei so for Lyman series we have to find now the Lyman series is been taken place when the particle they are jumping from the second orbit towards the first orbit so this is also known as the first line or the h alpha line you can say of the Lyman series and this line it has the longest wavelength so this wavelength we have to find so we have to find the energy value for this n is equal to 2 orbit and the energy value for n is equal to 1 orbit for this muon particle so we can find out from the energy relation so energy relation we know so en that is of the order of minus 13.6 electron volt z square over n square so it is dependent upon the atomic number of the atom and the orbital number in which that electron is present in electron volt. So for Lyman series so the E2 value for this muon so it comes out to be of the order of 
180 over 2 square times the E1 value and similarly for the first orbit the energy of the muon that is of 1 square E1. So from that so the value it comes out to be 45 times E1 and this is coming of the order of 180 times the value of E1. So change in energy so when this particle so they are coming from E n is equal to 2 to n is equal to 1 so there is a change in energy when the particle it is coming from the higher orbital state to lower orbital state so that is E2 minus E1 for this muon particle and this delta E that is equal to H into nu because when the particle it is at the higher excited state and it loses its energy then it emit some photons which is having the energy that is of the order of h into nu and from that we can calculate the change in wavelength of that particular photons which are coming out so h nu it is of the order of 45 minus 180 times e1 so that is of the order of minus 130 E1 so this E1 value it is also negative so this negative and negative it get positive so HCU over lambda so from this we can find out the value of this longest wavelength so it comes out to be so lambda is HC over 135 times E1 so putting the value of the Planck's constant 6.62 into 10 is to power minus 34 joule second into speed of light that is of the order of 3 into 10 is to power 8 meter per second 135 into E1 E1 we know that is of the order of 3.6 electron volt and 1 electron volt that is of the order of 1.6 into 10 is to power minus 19 joules so from this we can calculate the value of this longest wavelength so it is coming of the order of 0.00667 into 10 is to power minus 7 meter so you can recheck by doing the calculations and this is of the order of 6.67 angstrom because we know one angstrom that is of the order of 10 is to power minus 10 meter so this is the value of the longest wavelength so when the muon it is losing its energy from the uh, Nyman series that is from the second orbital to n is equal to one state so the correct option that is option B so let us move towards the third question so it is if r1 is the value of the red bug constant assuming mass of the nucleus to be infinitely large so this is the value of the infinite large nucleus that is of the order of r infinity which is having the maximum value and we have to compare to that of an electron and if R2 is the Radberg constant taking nuclear mass to be 7500 times the mass of electron. So we have to calculate the ratio of this R2 over R1. Now R infinity that is our R1 Radberg constant and Rm that is for the finite nucleus mass that is 7500 times higher as compared to mass of electron so let us say that is rm that is for the finite nucleus mass it is r2 now the ratio of the two masses so that is given which is of the order of 1 over 7500 times me because this is me and this is me so this get cancelled out and the ratio of these two masses that is of the order of 
1 over 7500. So from this we can put these values in this relation which we have already derived. So that is Rm for the finite nuclear mass, the red bar constant and this R infinity that is for the infinite nuclear mass. So 1 plus small m over capital M and R infinity we know that is of the order of 1.097 into 10 is to power 7 meter inverse. So this we have already derived. So we can write it in terms of centimeter that is 109740 centimeter inverse. So this is our R1. So R2 or Rm we can calculate from this given relation. So let us put these values. So R2 that is our Rm it comes out to be 109740 over 1 plus 1 over 7500 times centimeter inverse. So this comes out to be 109740 into 7500. So this goes to the numerator <coughs> and here it is 7501. So the value of R2 it is coming 109725 centimeter inverse and the value of R1 so that is 109740 so that is for the finite nuclear mass and this is for r infinity this is for infinite nuclear mass so from these values you can check that the value of the finite nuclear mass uh, red bar constant of finite nuclear mass it is less as compared to the infinite nuclear mass so therefore the ratio of these two red bar constants so r2 over r1 so that is a little less than unity So let us check which option is given. So first is a little less than unity. So this is our right answer. So this is how you can calculate. So the ratios of these two values and the examiner can ask the Redberg question. So by uh, providing you any type of information. So it is not just the number you have to calculate. So you have to make a rough estimate from the given option so which option is more close to your answer so let us move towards the next question so it says a hydrogen atom in its ground state is collided with an electron of kinetic energy 13.377 electron volt the maximum factor by which the radius of the atom would increase is so what is given the energy of electron in the nth orbit of the hydrogen atom so this we generally know with the formula that is minus 13.6 over n square z square and for hydrogen z is 1 so this formula becomes minus 13.6 over n square electron volt so for ground state energy so that is when n is 1 so the value of this e1 it comes out to be minus 13.6 electron volt now since electron have kinetic energy that is of the order of 13.377 electron volt so the difference in energy which we can check out so the electron has kinetic energy that is of the order of 13.377 electron volt so the difference in energy So when the electron it jumps from one orbital state to the other orbital state so that is minus 
into minus minus 13.377 electron volts so the binding energy that is the opposite to that of the separation energy so we will write here the value of minus 13.377 electron volt and from that we can calculate minus 13.6 plus 13.377 so that is of the order of minus 0.223 electron volt so this is the difference in energy uh, between the electron kinetic energy and the electron which are present in the ground state of hydrogen atom so let us check which state it can be so the electron it can be present in which state so since we know minus 13.6 over n square so that is equal to minus 0.223 electron volt so from that we can calculate the value of n that is of the order of 13.6 over 0.223 electron volt is on this side so they get cancelled out and the value of n square that is 61 so the n that is under root of 61 which is more or less close between 7 to 8th state because the square of 7 that is 49 and square of 8 it is 64 so the 61 digit it is between this 7th and 8th orbital state so the value of n it lies in n is equal to 7th state because the electron either it can be present in any one of these states so it can be the lower value so it cannot be present in the 8th state so most preferably it will be present in the 7th state so from that we have to calculate the radius so I think so this is our answer so the maximum factor by which the radius of an atom would increase so we have to calculate the value of this radius so let us put the value of n in the radius so the radius of the particular electron present in particular orbit so that is square of a naught so it is n square into a naught where a naught is our Bohr radius so that is the ground state of electron so n square we know that is 7 so 7 square that is approximately the 49 times the Bohr radius so our option is the maximum factor by which the radius of atom would increase it is of the order of 49 times greater as compared to Bohr radius so option C is the correct option so let us move towards the next question so it says in a transition to a state of excitation energy 10.19 electron volt and hydrogen like atom emit say 4890 angstrom wavelength photon then calculate the binding energy of the initial state of the electron so this we know so this is the final state this is the initial state so final state the energies of the order of EF so this is the initial state so the electron which is in the higher state it comes to the lower state and emit a photon which is having h nu of energy so the value of delta e that is of the order of e2 minus e1 so from this we can say delta e that is e2 minus e1 which is of the order of hc over lambda so ef e2 is our ef minus ei that is hc over lambda where h is planck's constant c is the speed of light 
and lambda is the given wavelength of the emitted photon. So from this we have to calculate the binding energy of this initial state. So we have to calculate the value of this EI. So EI we can write it is of the order of EF minus HC over lambda. So putting these values, so EF that is given of the order of 10.19 electron volt minus H 6.623 into 10 is to power minus 34 into 3 into 10 is to power 8 over lambda that is 4890 into 10 is to power minus 10 meter and when we convert this uh, into electron volt we divide it with 1.6 into 10 is to power minus 19 and when we calculate it so it is coming of the order of 2.54 electron volt so the value of ei the binding energy of the initial state it is of the order of 7.65 electron volt so the rough estimate or the approximate value so our option a is the correct option so this is how you can calculate uh, uh, one of the energy if uh, the other energy is given or the wavelength of the emitted photon it is given so let us do the next problem so given that the ionization energy of hydrogen and lithium are approximately 13.6 electron volt and 5.39 electron volt respectively the effective nuclear charge experienced by the valence electron of this lithium atom so in terms of proton charge so here the energy relation we know so energy E that is minus 13.6 Z effective Z square over N square electron volt so for lithium so we know Z is 3 because atomic number of lithium is 3 and energy of lithium it is given 5.39 electron volt and similarly the valence electron of lithium lies in n is equal to 2 orbit so since lithium has 3 electrons so 2 electrons it will be present in n is equal to 1 orbit we know in s orbit there are only 2 electrons so the third electron it will be present in n is equal to 2 orbit so the valence electron so the valence electron of lithium it lies in n is equal to 2 orbit so putting these values of n and the energy of this lithium in this equation number 1 so from that we can calculate the approximately z effective value so 5.39 it is 13.6 into z effective square over n square n is 2 so square of 2 it is 4 so z effective value that is equal to 5.39 over 13.6 electron volt into 4 so Z effective scale it is of the order of 1.59 so from this we can calculate Z effective value that is under root of 1.59 that is of the order of 1.26 now for proton we know the charge that is of the order of 1 Me so the ratio of the effective nuclear charge so that is 
experienced by this valence electron in terms of the proton charge so it is of the order of 1.26 times e because the proton charge it is given e so our c option is the correct option and this is very important question which comes in TIFR Tata Institute of Fundamental Research in 2011 examination so the next question is the wavelength of seventh line of Balmer series of hydrogen atom so how we can calculate the wavelength so we have derived the standard formula of the wavelength from the energy spectral limit so that is 1 over lambda which is r infinity into 1 over n f square minus 1 over n i square so for first line so for balmer series we know that the final state nf that is equal to 2 so for first line we all know when the particle it is having the highest wavelength when the electron it jump from n is equal to 3 to n is equal to 2 orbit that is known as the first line so similarly what we have to calculate we have to calculate the wavelength of this seventh line so this seventh line will be so n is equal to 4 this is our second line similarly when n is 5 this is our third line and similarly when n is equal to 9 so that will be the seventh line of Balmer series so seventh line so for first line we know that the ni is 3 and similarly for seventh line of Balmer series so ni that will be equal to 9 so putting these values of nf and ni so we can calculate the wavelength so from this 1 over lambda r infinity we know that is 1.097 into 10 is to power 7 meter inverse 1 over nf <coughs> nf is 1 over 2 square 1 over 4 minus 1 over 9 square is 81 so this 1 over lambda it comes out to be r infinity into 77 over 81 into 4 so from that lambda it comes out to be 81 into 4 over 77 into r infinity the red bar constant so that we know so 10 is to power 7 moves upward and it becomes 10 is to power minus 7 meter so when we calculate it the wavelength of the seventh line of Balmer series so that is of the order of 3.84 into 10 is to power minus 7 meter and that is of the order of 384 nanometer so look at these options so the correct option is 384 nanometer so here I would like to mention that so this is the important key point which you need to remember so generally for the seventh line some of the students so they, they choose the value of this ni that is equal to seven but that is correct so you have to check which series they are talking about so from that you can uh, estimate what type of energy uh, limit it is present so next question is the energy required to remove an electron from a singly ionized helium atom which is in the nth eighth state so here again this is very important question so energy required to remove an electron that is known as the binding energy 
so that is the minimum energy which is required to remove an electron from a particular atom and for a singularly ionized helium so for helium plus so it is a hydrogen like atom so for helium the value of this z is 2 and n it is given 8 so from that we can calculate the value of en minus 13.6 z square over n square electron volt so putting the value of z and n so that is 2 square over 8 square that is minus 13.6 over 16 that is of the order of minus 0.85 electron volt and the this is the energy of the electron which is present in the nth eighth state so the binding energy is the opposite of this energy which is present for that particular electron and the value of this binding energy that is of the order of 0.85 electron volt so our c option is the correct option so let us do the ninth question so it is saying let e1 e2 and e3 be the first three energy levels of hydrogen atom and we have to consider the ratio of these energy that is e3 minus e2 over e2 minus e1 so we have to find the value of this ratio of energy so if you look at this ratio e3 minus e2 over e2 minus e1 so you can say that so this is the energy of the electron which is present in n 3 orbit and this is the energy which is present in n is equal to 2 orbit so when a electron which is present in the third orbit and it loses and jump to a n is equal to 2 orbit and that is known as the first line of balmer series so this is first line of balmer series and similarly when the electron it is jumping from n is equal to 2 to n is equal to 1 series and that is known as the first line of lyman series so this is the key so from this you can see this is the difference in energy of first line of balmer series and this is the difference in energy of first line of lyman series so from that you can calculate the value for each energy minus 13.6 when over n square so n is 3 so 3 square is 9 minus minus 13.6 over 2 square over minus 13.6 e2 that is 2 square minus minus 13.6 over 1 square electron volt so when you solve for it it is coming of the order of minus 1.51 minus 3.4 electron volt over minus 3.4 minus minus 13.6 electron volt so that is of the order of e3 minus e2 over e2 minus e1 that is 1.89 over 10.2 electron volt so it is in the ratio of 5 over 27 so the correct option is option d so this is the question which is in csir 2017 examination so next question is which of the following transition is not allowed in the case of an atom now we have studied in the bohr summerfield theory so the allowed transitions are only those where the value of delta l that is of the order of plus minus 1 
so delta l when there is a change in the orbital state of electron so here you can check that from a transition from p to s state so here there is a change in value of l so here l is 1 here l is 0 so there is change in parity so this transition is possible so 2p to 2s this is also possible so from l is equal to 2 to l is equal to 1 this transition is also possible so this is the only transition from 2s to minus 1 this is not allowed the transition so according to bohr summerfield theory because delta l here it is coming of the order of 0 so there is no change in parity while in the allowed transition we know that there is always change in parity in our allowed transitions so which of the following transition is not allowed transition so option a is the option in which there is no change in parity and it is not a allowed transition so next question is consider red bug hydrogen like atoms in a highly excited state with n around 300 the wavelength of the radiation coming out of these atoms for transition to the adjacent state lies in the range so we have to calculate the wavelength of the emitted particles and then we have to make a rough estimate so that wavelength it lies in which wavelength region so this is the atom which is present in n is equal to 300 state and it is coming out for the transition to the adjacent state so obviously the adjacent state of n 300 state so the adjacent state is the 299 state so this electron it will come to its adjacent state from 300 to 299 and it will emit some of the photons and we have to calculate the wavelength of those photons <coughs> sorry so similarly we will use the standard formula of wavelength so that is from n final minus 1 over n i square so it is r infinity over 1 over 299 square minus 1 over 300 square so from this the value of lambda it is coming of the order of 300 square it is 90,000 into 299 square it is 89401 over 599 into Redberg constant that is 1.097 into 10 is to power minus 7 meter and when we calculate it the wavelength it is coming of the order of 1.225 meter and this wavelength is lying in the radio frequency region so this you can check from the electromagnetic spectrum and this is the radio frequency wavelength region so option D is correct so moving towards the next problem the positronium is an atom made of an electron and a positron so this we have already discussed about the positronium atom given that the Bohr radius for the ground state of hydrogen atom so that is the Bohr magnetron it is of the order of 0.53 angstrom so we have to find the Bohr radius for this positronium atom in the ground state so here the value of this radius that we can compare when the particle it is moving in a centripetal force having mv square over r and when we compare this with 
the coulomb force that is z e square over r square and from that we can calculate the value of this r n that is n square h square epsilon naught over 4 m z d square so this represent the value of this radius it is inversely proportional to the nuclear mass now for positronium which is having one electron and one positron so the reduced mass of this positronium that is me into me over me plus me so that is coming of the order of me by 2 so for the Bohr radius the value of the hydrogen atom which is present in the ground state whose radius is 0 0.53 angstrom and we have to calculate the value of the radius for this positronium atom so let's compare these two results so for hydrogen atom and this is for the positronium atom and they are inversely proportional to their masses so from that the radius of the positronium atom it is me over mu p into a naught that is the Bohr radius for hydrogen atom and putting the value of this mu p that is me by 2 into 0 0.53 angstrom so that is of the order of 2 into 0 0.53 angstrom so for positronium the radius will be double as compared to the hydrogen atom so the value of the Bohr radius for this positronium atom it is 1.06 angstrom so this is we have to calculate and this is the question of gate 2017 examination so moving towards the last question and which is very important and that is related with the Bohr Sommerfeld theory and the question is if the principal quantum number and the azimuthal quantum number in the relativistic model of atom are 3 and 1 respectively. So we have derived a relation that is B over A that is equal to K over N where K represents the azimuthal quantum number while N represents the principal quantum number. and this represents the electron they are moving in the elliptical orbits and for that ellipse B represents so that is the semi minor axis and A represents the semi major axis so it is something like this elliptical orbit so this is our nucleus and this is the value of A and this is the value of B and we have to calculate the magnitude of the ratio of the semi minor axis to semi major axis so we have to find out the ratio of B over A and the value of principal quantum number so N is 3 K is 1 this is given so putting these values so B it is coming of the order of A by 3 so A is the correct option which is representing the ratio of the semi minor axis B over semi major axis A so this is all about today's lecture and in this I have tried to cover all those important questions so which can be come which are part of these topics which have we have already discussed in detail so I hope you have understand all these numerical problems and if you have any type of doubt you can write your uh, doubts in the comment section or you can provide your review so if you are liking these lectures or you can provide the feedback about these lectures so here in the 4 pi academy we are trying to give our best and our main motive is to train your mind 
to crack the competition exams like CSIR, GATE and we hope that you will be successful in your goals. So keep watching 4Pi Academy. Till then, goodbye.